Hi, we're Anna Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to discuss how your marriage is your first ministry. If you've been loving these these podcast episodes and the topics we're talking about, we'd love it if you went and left us a star review and even a, a review comment. Those help us get reached so other people find our podcast. Uh, so if you have a moment and you're loving the podcast, please go leave us a review and a star rating. So one of the reasons we started the Marriage After God podcast is because we had this wild idea to write a book called Marriage After God, mm-hmm. and we've been working really hard on the manuscript, and we're so excited about it, and so we just wanted to share that with you guys. But also, um, every once in a while, there's just this really strong topic that we need to share with you through the podcast based off the content of the book, and one of the chapters is about marriage being your first mm-hmm. ministry, and so that's why we chose this topic for today's episode. So whether you realize it or not, uh, you are in a ministry. And I'm not talking about you're being a pastor or um, a worship Worship leader leader. um, or a missionary, which we were for a little bit. We're saying that you currently, as a husband and a wife, are in ministry in your marriage. Mm -hmm. That the first place that you practice the things that the Bible teaches us, um, as we always say, you know, your first neighbor, right? Who's your closest neighbor? It's your spouse. And so when the Bible tells us to love your neighbor as yourself, uh, this is what we're talking about that if you don't focus and and treat your marriage as a ministry the way we should and we let it fall apart and we don't and we don't give it the attention it deserves then it doesn't matter what other ministry we might want to do outside the home you know if you're we we see it in the headlines yeah. you know what are the headlines that like you know pastor leaves his wife yeah. you know a missionary couple break up like there's just these these stories we hear them and what happens is they forgot what their first ministry was. Not just that, but it actually affects the ministry that they're trying to do. Yeah, and and what you know what my heart for this is, what good is it if we're we're blessing and serving others outside of our home, and then our wife, our husband, and our children get seconds, thirds, fourths of our of our ministry? Mm. You know, the outside world and uh, people out there are getting all of the love, all of the attention, all of the, the this, our strength and our service and our ministry. And at home, our spouse and our children are falling apart mm-hmm. and they're not being loved and they're not being served and they're not being taken care of the way the Bible tells us to, to take care of them. That to me is called hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. And I don't, it doesn't matter how good it is out there. If your, your first ministry is being neglected, you're a hypocrite. Mm-hmm. And this was us. Yeah, when we realized this, I mean, it was a it was a shock to us because we had been pursuing God, and the the extraordinary work mm-hmm. that He had for us. We were missionaries. We were traveling yeah. in Africa, and you went to Brazil, and then we were in Doing different all these states. Great things, yeah. And at the forefront, yeah, mm-hmm. we were pursuing all of these things for God, but behind the scenes, like our marriage, yeah, was crumbling. Yeah. And so, I guess the question is, like, what gospel are you actually reflecting? If that's the case. Yeah. And so if you're in a place in your marriage and you're both believers, okay, I'm going to talk to um, mixed couples in a second that are, you know, believer and believer. But if you're in a uh, marriage and you're both believers and your marriage is not in a good place, that is when right now you need to recognize like, man, am I, are we seeing our marriage as our first ministry? As a wife, do I see my role as a wife, as a ministry to my husband? Mm, That's good. You know, as a husband, do I see my role as a husband as a ministry to my wife? And so it actually elevates your marriage to another level of realizing like, wait, I'm not just a husband. I don't just go to work. I don't just pay the bills. I don't just do the things that, you know, have to be done for everyday normal life to exist. But I actually recognize like actually my wife, I, she has a spirit that I'm supposed to be ministering to. Mm-hmm. She's, she's got a spirit that I'm supposed to be like washing with the word. And what's the point of that? Like, what's the when you say my wife is my ministry? Like, what what's your goal? Well, my goal is to do what it tells me in Ephesians five is to wash you by the water with the word, so that you become you know clean and new and refreshed and cherished, and you're filled with the word of God, mm-hmm. and you are uh, you actually become more useful for ministry outside the home because of it. Yeah, right. Like if I'm if you go to do ministry and you don't know where you are with me. Mm-hmm. Does that make you feel more or less confident? Less confident. But if you just know like, oh, my husband loves me. Mm-hmm. He is there for me. He cherishes me. He's behind me. He mm-hmm. serves me. I'm, I'm not concerned about where we're at. You're more confident yeah. and more prepared. Yeah. Right? And vice versa. What happens when you 
see your role to me as a ministry? My perspective obviously has changed from a selfish one to a purpose-filled one. Mm -hmm. And I, I actually can see beyond even my purpose will mm-hmm. ministry to you and the impact you then will have in other people's lives. Yeah, because when we have a marriage after God mm-hmm. and we both see our marriage as a ministry and we're, and we're serving each other and loving each other as the Bible teaches us to, and we're walking in obedience to the word, right? Who's going to benefit from that? Our children? Yeah, our family members. Our family members? Everybody. Our coworkers, uh, neighbors. Mm-hmm. The impact they're gonna, is huge. Yeah, because let's say we didn't even say a word, but they saw our marriage. Mm-hmm. And they saw how cherished you know, my wife was and how loved and um, um, honored the husband was. And Especially and, in contrast to our culture today, right? Which doesn't do that. Which doesn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> the, it, it, does, it actually um, teaches the opposite. It, it encourages the opposite, celebrates selfishness, the opposite. Yeah. And selfishness and adultery. And, and then they see a marriage that's, you know, won't talk, the husband won't talk bad about his wife in front of someone or a wife who protects her husband's name in front of people or submits to him or submits to him, <laughs> you know, God forbid. But like, that's what the Bible teaches. Those are the things that we do. You know, if I loved my wife as Christ loves the church, right? Laying myself down for her. Mm-hmm. I lay my hobbies down for her. You know, a, a friend invites me to go do something. No, actually, like I already told my wife, I'm going to spend time with her today and the kids. Keep your word. Yeah. And I keep my word and they're like, oh, Okay. <laughs> and, but that's that's ministry that's happening now outside the home simply because I've seen my marriage as a ministry. And I think when pe- when people are confronted with that difference, that stark contrast mm-hmm. compared to the world, they question it, right? And what's the answer? What's yeah. the only reason you can give them for why your marriage is that way? Yeah, we say, you know what? We submit to the Word of God. We mm-hmm. love God. And because He saved us, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to walk the way He's asked us to walk. So therefore, you're, point- you're yeah. actually pointing other people's hearts to the Lord based off what they see in your marriage. Yeah. And so we, you know, as we grow in our marriage and as we focus on walking the way the Bible tells us to walk within our marriage, mm-hmm. we bear fruit. Mm-hmm. Good fruit. And what's the fruit for on the tree? Is it for the tree's sake? for everybody else's sake that's going to eat of it. Yeah, they pluck from the tree and they eat mm-hmm. the fruit. And they're like, man, this fruit's good. They're nourished by it. They're, yeah, how do I get more of this? They enjoy it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the other good thing about the fruit is it plants seeds. Mm-hmm. And so, the, you know, Paul mentions a couple times in the Bible, he says, he says, follow my example. And so, uh, you know, a pastor told me a long time ago, he said, Aaron, can you honestly tell someone in your life to follow your example? It's a hard question. It's a really hard question. So, you know, you have to ask yourself the questions yeah. too. You know, can I ask someone to follow my example as a wife? Well, it forces you to evaluate your life and say, who am I and what am I doing? Yeah. And we sh- this doesn't mean we're perfect. Mm-mm. This doesn't say like, hey, I'm perfect, therefore do exactly as I've done. This is saying like my life and the direction I'm going and the mm-hmm. choices I make and the wisdom I walk in and the way I decide things. And the- mm-hmm. Can you tell someone to follow that example? Mm-hmm. Or do you have to constantly tell someone like, actually... Do what I say, not what I do. You know, do what the Bible says, but not necessarily what I do because I don't always do what the Bible says. Mm. Uh, no, we want to be examples. So again, when you focus and you make your, you re- recognize the ministry that is your marriage, the ministry outside that marriage starts happening organically. Yep. Because yeah. you could tell someone like, actually, no, follow our example. Mm. You know, we are growing and learning and changing and we're following what the Bible tells us and therefore you should do the same. And I can confidently say that. And that's a, we just want to challenge you with that question to ask yourselves. Mm-hmm. Can you tell another young couple, uh, another new believer, um, a non-believer, to follow your example and be honest with it and say, no, honestly, like, look at my life. Come peek in. Peer into our home and follow our example. And you know what? There are areas of our life that we know we can't tell someone to follow in our example. And we have to be confronted with that. And we have to change it. Mm-hmm. You know, that when we see, like, oh, you know, actually... We, we still bicker, you know, we need to, we can't tell someone to follow our example in the way we communicate because sometimes we communicate wrong. And this is something that we are often confronted with and have to change it. But you know what I can tell someone? Hey, follow our example in the fact that we are humble and we recognize when we're wrong mm-hmm. <laughs> and we change. Hey, we just wanted to take a quick break from this week's episode to invite you and your spouse to take Jennifer and I's 31 day marriage prayer challenge. We wrote 31 prayers for my husband and 31 prayers for my wife to encourage couples in their prayer life for one another. So if you're interested in taking our challenge, as thousands of couples have already done, please go to marriageaftergod.com forward slash challenge at the end of this episode and you'll get more information about the challenge. 
Thousands of couples have already gone through this prayer challenge and we're so excited to be able to extend this to you and invite you to participate. We dare your marriage. Yeah, so you talk about, you know, this example and and being an example to other people and our example is found in the word and what, you know, Mm -hmm. how God directs our hearts. And so I want to read Ephesians 5, 22 through 33. So it says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his Mm -hmm. body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any Mm. such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, Mm. just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Yeah, so that was a lot of scripture, but this is like the the staple marriage scripture. Uh, But what's happening here, there's something so much deeper than what we might think. Mm -hmm. Paul is telling us that our marriages are a symbol that represent an ancient mystery, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is Christ and the church. My wife represents the church, all of us. Me as a husband, I represent Christ in the world. And our relationship together represents Christ's relationship with the church. Uh, And so we have to ask ourselves, what message are we giving to the world with our marriage? Yeah. If we're we're walking this way, if we're being obedient to these scriptures, Mm -hmm. people will see the reflection of Christ in the church. Yeah. That's exactly what our ministry is as a, in our marriage. That our marriage is not just to make us happy. It's not just to you know be a happily ever after story. But our marriage is actually a it's a earthly symbol of a spiritual truth. Mm-hmm. That my wife represents a church that is become one with the body of Christ, and that's what we're telling the world. We're like, hey, we this oneness that we have, this the way we walk, we're representing a heavenly spiritual truth. And here's the here's the downfall. If you're not doing that, you're showing the world a false gospel. You're showing the world like, hey, uh, God only loves you as long as you, you know, serve me the way I want to be served. God only is going to love you if you do everything right. God's, you know, that this is what you do. You, you When you show you the world your marriage that's um, fractured and broken and maybe even divorcing or uh, adultery and cheating and all these things, those are pictures of how the people of Israel were towards God when they would go and chase after false gods. That's what adultery, that's why they use the word adultery in the Bible. It was cheating on God. And so when we walk in faithfulness with each other and in oneness with each other, we're sh- showing the true message of what Christ came to do. And, is, and it produces fruitfulness in so many different aspects of your marriage, your family, yeah. your children, um, other people in your proximity of who's around you. And so we just, yeah, we, we, we love this idea and message that the Bible presents of our marriages being a yeah. ministry because it really is a beautiful mm. thing that represents a beautiful mi- mi- mystery. Yeah. And so if you're currently in ministry outside the home, let's say you're a youth pastor, uh, a, a senior pastor, worship leader, uh, or the plethora of other ministries out there. I mean, there's so many there. little things like you greet people, you know, yeah. maybe you're a hospitable, maybe you... Um, I don't know, serve the Mm -hmm. prison ministry. There's so many different types of ministry, so we don't want to just put certain labels out there, but we're talking to everybody who spends time outside the home serving others and and spending their time there. This is what we'd say to you. If your marriage is not this way, if it's not in order, not perfect, but if you guys are not focusing on seeing your marriage as a ministry, take a break from the ministry you're doing outside the church, outside your home. Yeah, don't sacrifice your marriage for that ministry. Yeah, um, a, a quote I say in the book is, is don't sacrifice your marriage on the altar of ministry. Mm, that's good. <laughs> you know, you're, focus on your marriage. Go go. make sure you, you are an example so that you are not gonna be disqualified in this ministry when someone says like, wait a minute, you're telling me to be this way, but why are you being that way over there? Mm-hmm. We wanna be good examples. Yeah. Um, doesn't then, mean throw the ministry out, but 
say, hey, I want to take a break yeah. from this. I want to go. I need, I need to work on something. We've done this. We recognized mm-hmm. this when we were in Africa, um, or actually when we were in Canada. And well, we're several like, different hey. spots yeah, we, in, <laughs> over time. And we realized, like, hey, we need to go home and take care of some stuff. Yeah. And you know what? God worked on us, and he was faithful to heal us and show us that this was our first ministry, and that nothing else mattered unless we could do this. Yeah. And I want to go back to um, what you said about, you know, not don't sacrifice your marriage on the altar of ministry. That's such a good quote. Um, but it doesn't happen in just one choice. It's not one decision just to yeah. say, I'm going to choose this ministry over my marriage. It happens incrementally. And I just wanted yeah. them to hear that because I think it's really important to know that every choice that you make has an impact mm-hmm. on your marriage. And that's really, I think that we need to just stop and like think about that sometimes. That's good. And I just thought of something. Um, one of our previous episodes, we talked about escapism. Yeah. Um, if you're using a ministry to mm-hmm. escape what's going on in your marriage, like, oh, I can't even deal with this, or I'm, I feel so lonely, or this, and so therefore I'm going to go over here mm-hmm. and use this ministry and, what I'm, and my serving way. over here to get uh, your mind off of it, again, s- take a break mm-hmm. and ask, say, God, I want, to, I want to be a good minister over here in my marriage. Mm-hmm. I want to serve you as a good soldier in my home, mm-hmm. you know, as Timothy is told by Paul, you know, I want to, I want to go minister in my home. Right. So real quick, I want to talk about, um, I want to talk to marriages where one of the spouses isn't a believer. Um, you might be thinking like, well, how am I supposed to do this? I can't go do any ministry because I, my husband or my wife's not a believer. Mm-hmm. Now I want to say this, I want to say, don't just throw your ministry away. But what I would say is make sure you are being the way you've been called to be as a ministry in your home even though your spouse is an unbeliever. Um, Peter gives us some very specific direct- directives in 1 Peter chapter 3, telling husbands and wives how to be when your spouse is an unbeliever. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't mean throw the other ministry you might be doing out, but make sure you are ministering the way God des- desires you to minister in your home now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so this is a little bit different. Um, if you're both believers, I think you should absolutely definitely take a break from ministry if your marriage is not in order yeah. and you're not ministering to each other the way the Bible calls us to. Um, if you're in a marriage where one's an unbeliever, you can still be seeing your marriage as your first ministry. And you can actually sacrifice things and be like, you know, actually, I can't go do that because um, I know that I'm going to go spend time with my husband for this purpose. And consider the impact that's going to make in yeah. your husband's life. I mean, that's just incredible. Yeah, go read First Peter chapter 3 mm-hmm. and see the power that a believing spouse could have in an unbelieving spouse's life when you walk the way the Bible tells you to. It tells you that you could potentially save them mm-hmm. and bring them salvation through the way you are to them. And so, again, I don't want to just say throw it all out, but I would say consider if you are ministering to your unbelieving spouse the way you've been called to minister to them really first. Good. And then do those other ministries because I'm sure you know I could see that being a case where you know you have you're around other believers and you want to you know serve in those ways and maybe your spouse has wants nothing to do with that. So I, I just um, weigh that, balance that, take it with a grain of salt on that side. Pray about it. Pray about it, but know that even in, in a situation where you have an unbelieving spouse, it is still your first ministry. Yep. So another scripture that we wanted to bring up for you guys is First Timothy three five. Did you want to read that and just touch a little bit on what yeah. the scripture says? So this is um, Paul's telling Timothy. Uh, he's giving order on how um, an overseer um, or a deacon qualifies to be in those roles in the church. And so I'm not talking in the sense of those, but I want to talk in the sense of how we all should be. Mm. And he says this in chapter three, verse one, it says this, this saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. So first of all, um, to all the men, he's saying like, Hey, it's a noble thing to desire that position, Mm -hmm. whether you have it or not. And so we should desire it. Um, But listen to the qualifications he gives. He says, therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. And then listen to this part. He says, he must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? Mm. So in regards to just doing ministry, Mm -hmm. This is saying, like, having this specific ministry in the church, this is the qualifications, but we should all desire this position, and therefore we should all try and desire to walk in these ways. And he's, and this is a pretty stark thing. He's saying, he's saying, how can you want to manage the household of God if you can't manage your own home? Mm -hmm. And then he even says up here that a qualification is being a husband of one wife. And so he's even saying, like, marriage 
is a qualification for that position. And so there's all these these things that line up of saying like, is my home in order? Yeah. Is my is my wife cherished? You know, is my husband loved respected. and respected? Mm-hmm. Um, are my children, you know, submissive and honoring to us? Mm-hmm. Meaning we're taking the time and training our children. And so these are all things that happen in the home. Mm-hmm. These are all things that happen at home right here with this relationship. And so this was just an encouragement. Again, we're not talking specifically about this office in the church. We're just using these principles overall. And if we're thinking about trying to do ministry outside the home, mm-hmm that we should have our home in order, have our hearts in order with our spouse, have our hearts in order with our children. Because you know what? At the end of my life, I don't want to go and stand before my Father in Heaven and have all these great things that I've done and have lost my children to the world and have a wife that was bitter and angry to me because of the way I led. I would much rather have a wife that is cherished and loved and feels confident and powerful in a ministry that God has for her. And I'd rather have children who love me and and uh, love God, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. Than any other ministry in the whole world. Yeah. I'd rather those things to be true in my life. But you know what? When those things are true in our lives, ministry naturally happens outside the home. Yep. Because there's freedom, there's fruit, there's authority, there's power. We're not hypocrites. We walk in in authority because we're not ashamed. We're not hiding. And that's what our hearts is for you. That's our hearts for um, you as you walk in a, as a marriage after God. Mm-hmm. That you would see your marriage as your first ministry. Again, we're not saying your only ministry. But it's your first ministry. It's the first person God's given you to practice the things that God's told us to be yep. in this world. And we do it to each other first and foremost. And then we do it to our kids and then everyone else after that. So we just want to encourage you today. Ask yourself that question. Can you be an example? Can people follow your example? Ask yourself, do you see your marriage as your first ministry? And then ask God to to reveal to you how he wants you to navigate that and and turn towards each other in um, in that way. Thank you guys so much for joining us this week. We hope that it blessed your marriage and that you just have an incredible week and we'll see you next time. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. 